we often claim that living in the Midwest, we need tiki. Um, a lot of people love the fact that it's kind of an escape. It's an escape from the everyday. And here in the wintertime, it's an escape from the cold. You can uh, well, put your parka on and uh, over your Aloha shirt, go to a tiki bar, restaurant, take it off and uh, pretend you're in Hawaii for a few hours. I'm Amy Carter. And I'm David Carter. And we collect tiki stuff. <laughs> We uh, moved here after looking for our dream house for several years. So in our tiki room is the warmest room in our house. <laughs> so we spend a lot of time down there in the winter and when you're down there, you don't even realize what's going on outside. So you can be in your own paradise in the basement, just chilling out and having a Mai Tai. So instead of the kids getting a playroom in the basement, <laughs> we have a tiki bar. <laughs> Almost every piece downstairs you know, has a story. There's lamps and, and uh, pufferfish lights that came from old places. Like, it's kind of a museum. It's a living museum. We, we like to hang out down there. We store our collection down there. I think it's a lot of things. It's the aesthetic. Um, you know, it's, it's visually compelling. All the tiki idols and the, and the dark, evocative space. Uh, you know, of course, the scantily clad hula girls that a lot of people like. Um, but uh, it, it, it's, there's so, much, so many aspects to the whole tiki kind of phenomenon, uh, you know, from architecture to, you know, graphic design, um, all, this, all the ephemera that we've collected, you know, menus and postcards and, and matchbook covers and everything is just so visually rich. That's what uh, appeals to us. And anytime we have company over, we end up hanging out downstairs. Everybody wants to hang out in the tiki room. <laughs> <laughs>